Okay, today we have a an Apple iPad Pro 12.9 inch, this third gen, I believe uh, 2018, I think. That's a A2014 is the model. Of course, there are multiple models that uh, are of the same generation, depending on whether you have cellular or not. But uh, the uh, the premise, of course, on this is going to be the same. The Glass and the LCD and digitizer are all together as one assembly, unlike uh, regular iPads. Unfortunately, that does make these a little bit harder to work on and much more costly to get parts for. The uh, premise, though, is basically the same. We basically want to warm up the screen, uh, cut the, the adhesive underneath the edge. You do not want to extend your, your spudger tip very far because as you can see on our new screen here, there are ribbons extremely close to the edge. Now this is actually down this side, and the ribbon's up here, and there's a ribbon down here, I believe. Uh, down here, actually. Uh, so we've got a whole bunch of, of ribbons on this. A lot more than in, in previous generations of the iPad. There's also a flex cable that runs over here. The only one for, for our intents and purposes that really, really matters is the flex up here that runs to the camera. You damage that flex and you lose the face recognition uh, means to bypass having a, a pin. Um, it's not the end of the world if that happens, but the facial recognition will cease to work. You can replace the camera, but um, it's a, one of those deals where you can only use facial recognition if you're using the original camera that came with the unit. That's a security measure. So, go ahead and get this started. We want to use the, the uh, heat gun moderately. You do need to warm this up. Um, I don't use an infrared thermometer or anything like that, but my recommendation as to the method of, of making sure you get the right amount of heat, you basically want it to be hot enough you can just barely touch it. If it's too hot to touch, you got it too hot. If it's cooled to the point where you can comfortably lay your hand on it, then it's cooled too much. And, you know, feel free to work on it for a little while, add some more heat, work on it a bit more, add some more heat. That's totally normal. You're not going to damage anything by doing that. The only way you may damage things is if you've got a hole in the glass, like right here, and you're sending heat down inside. You do not want to heat the batteries. You do not want to heat the camera. Um, you basically just want to heat the, the, the edge of the glass. So if you've got a hole, keep the air kind of angled away from the, the, the hole in the glass. Uh, but again, you want to heat this up well enough that it's to the point where you can just barely touch it. I've got just a, a cheap, uh, I think I probably picked this up at Harbor Freight, heat gun um, set to kind of medium high. I uh, turned it to, to high speed. You could certainly do this on low speed if you wanted to. It's not the end of the world either way. And you just kind of want to go back and forth with it. You don't want to sit in one place for a long time because you want the heat to penetrate the glass. And you do that by heating up the glass and keeping it heated for a little while, more than with a whole bunch of heat all at once. Uh, a whole bunch of heat all at once will get the glass hot, but it won't really penetrate to where you're warming that adhesive, which is what really matters. And I do apologize, I know the audio quality is not fantastic over the heat gun, but uh, unfortunately that's just the way it goes. Now I do not like to stick the spudger very far into the glass, just barely far enough to do the job. You do not want to be damaging other things under there. So um, you will slip out, but that's okay. You can always just try again. It's a whole lot better than uh, damaging something important and uh, regretting it after the fact. The earlier generation iPads, can't tell you how many times I've had to replace uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas that were damaged by folks cutting the the antenna itself when they were just trying to cut the adhesive. And also the ribbon that runs up to the power cable is another common accidental damage that happens on these if you're you're not real careful. Um, on, on the older generations at least. 
So you can see I have multiple spudgers. This one is extremely thin and flexible. It's great for starting, but using a thicker and stiffer one is easier after you've got it initially taken care of, after, you know, after you've initially cut the adhesive. Yeah, the glass is cool enough to the point where I can comfortably touch it, so I'm going to add some more heat. <clears throat> now up here at the top I'm being extremely careful not to penetrate more than about one millimeter into the iPad. You definitely do not want to go cutting the flex at the top if there's any possible way to avoid it.
Okay, now I've got the glass no longer glued to the frame all the way around. However, we still can't just lift it off because there are two cables, uh, flexes that are very short, and they're at opposite ends. So unlike earlier iPads or, or you know, the standard iPad where you could kind of open it up like a book, this one you need to kind of swing it down just a little bit and then remove the screws that hold the flex in place. Now that we have the top flex disconnected, we can swing it around a little bit. I'm actually going to swing it back this way so that we can disconnect the lower flexes. These screws do come in varying lengths, so make sure that you keep track of where they came from and where they go to so that you don't damage something by putting a long screw in where a short screw belonged. Now I did do some things off camera here. Uh, the battery connector on these is a royal pain. Uh, it is similar to some of the older iPads. Essentially what it is, there's no um, clip per se. There is a stiff flex cable that runs from, actually there's one that runs from this battery over here and then the main runs from this battery under here and it has contacts directly beneath this connector. There's a screw that goes through here that presses down on the connector, holds it tight to the batteries and essentially should work to uh, make good connection. It makes relatively good connection for uh, the original time around. However, anytime you have to remove it, it becomes a little more dodgy. It's not like having a snap connector where it only fits in one way. With this, you get a little crooked, you can still screw it down and think everything's fine and then you find out you weren't. Um, that having been said, what you have to do is lift the logic board up and put something non-conductive between the logic board and the flex for the battery. Not as easy as it sounds because the logic board is glued down and with, with a, a temperature sensitive adhesive and there are flex cables, like you can see this one right here, that pass directly beneath the logic board. So you can't just get into there with a spudger and pry it up. Besides, you wouldn't want to do that with a logic board anyway. That's just asking for trouble. Furthermore, there are flex connectors that connect to the logic board all the way around for its whole length. Um, in addition to a bunch of other screws that you would have to, to remove if you wanted to remove the logic board. Removing the logic board in one of these is not something you want to do under any circumstances. So the uh, best way to, to approach this that I found is to start with a heat gun right back here. Heat up the, the center pretty much from the apple to the uh, connectors at the bottom, about an inch wide. Warm that up, uh, kind of like the screen, you know, to where you can just barely still touch it. And flip it over. The heat should penetrate the aluminum pretty well to soften up the adhesive. Then, after the adhesive on the back is, is weakened, um, you can lift this up. But first, you need to disconnect all the connectors that are around here. So, we've got, if your iPad has 
LTE then, um, or a 4G or whatever these are, um, you've got an antenna that connects right there. Pop it up and out of the way. And you've got the flex for the SIM tray. Pop that up and out of the way. Remove the screw from the battery connector, obviously. Then you've got two speaker connectors on this side. The one that's closer to the charge port is on a bit of a, uh, a leash, per se, so you can, you basically you don't have to remove that one. This one is extremely short, uh, so in order to get any movement from the logic board at all, we do have to remove that connector. You just pop it up now, just lift straight out. Then the last two that we have to remove are the flex for the charge port and this flex that disappears underneath the logic board. I'm not sure where it goes, uh, and it's not really, uh, doesn't really matter, but uh, basically just need to pop both these out. This one is um, held down with adhesive, so you just gently pry it up. After you've done that, there's one screw right here that runs through this bracket. So we take the screw out, take the bracket off, then we're able to lift the logic board up. Now you want to do this with something uh, non-conductive, not sharp. Don't use a metal spudger. Um, I use my fingernail. Basically you just want to reach underneath and lift very, very gently. Because if you lift you know, with, with too much force, you're just going to crack your logic board and you're going to be in for a lot more grief than you're already in. Um, but just lift it very gently. Um, I lift it in two places right here. You do not want to pry against this cable right here. This cable is actually not a cable. It is a printed circuit board. That's right, that tiny little thing that looks like a flex cable is actually a PCB. You pry against that, you're gonna wind up breaking it. Um, so we don't want to pry, just basically lift. And if you can't lift it, that means you probably didn't warm up the adhesive enough. Go back, you know, flip it back over, warm the adhesive up some more, take your time and do it right. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is take the proximity sensor and whatever else is at the top there. The main cameras are actually mounted in the bezel, but we need to take the sensors and of course their flex off of the old LCD. We need to be very careful with this because this is what will prevent your face ID from working if you are not careful with it and it gets damaged. So we want to warm it up just a little bit, but not very much because these are definitely temperature sensitive. And just very carefully. Remove the sensors from your old LCD. Now I'm not sliding this under like a knife. Instead I slide it under and kind of tip it up a little bit to provide a little bit of upward force. You definitely don't want to simply pull on it. That is a recipe for disaster.
Now in this case, unfortunately, the glass was broken directly against the flex cables. It's not super likely on this one because it's only broken a couple places, but if the glass is broken right against a cable, it can definitely damage it and you were sunk before you started. So it's possible that this one's face ID may not function, just depending on whether or not that flex was damaged. So hopefully it was not. Okay, we have the parts we need off the old LCD. Let's grab the new one here. And what I like to do is use 3M adhesive. You get it in a roll like this. It's not real pretty stuff. It's wider than you need. So what I do is, actually I have, I have two different ways that I would use it in this case. One is to use a pair of scissors and actually cut it widthwise so that we get a very narrow strip we can lay down. The other is actually just to go ahead and lay it on there let it hang off the side and use a razor blade to cut off the extra. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera, then uh, come back and show you how we proceed from there. Then we can go ahead and get the new LCD's ribbons connected to the logic board. like to hear that little click when you're putting it on. Okay, that's those four. Then, unfortunately, you do have to wait to reinstall some of the flex until after you have connected the battery. Not something I like to do, um, but you definitely need to get these in there first. Now the reason why you have to wait is because when you remove this, um, of course it's going to drop and, and reconnect to the battery right then, but you have to remove that before you can connect the speaker, the charge, whatever this flex is, and of course these two that actually have to lay right over the, the screw that holds it down. So, we'll take our guitar pick out of there. Now something else I noticed during this process, there is actually, and I am not sure if this is intentional or, or if it's a defect, there is a washer on the back side between this clip and the flex. And if the if you bump the washer with your guitar pick, it's going to move. So you need to make sure that the washer is centered properly. Now I'm not sure if that washer is supposed to be there or if that's actually part of this top clip that didn't uh, didn't stay where it was supposed to be. I'm, I have a feeling it's supposed to be retained by this top clip and this one's just defective, but no way to know that. Um, so we need to make sure that that washer goes back where it needs to be. Now remember we cannot reach in there with anything metal. Uh, because we do not want to short the battery. Obviously that would be a very bad thing. So we need to get the washer lined back up if it has moved. In my case, I believe I got lucky and the washer is still where it needs to be. Or at least it's close enough that I can just stick the screw through and it will slide it back into place.
Okay, we've got a good connection there. <coughs> we can reinstall the rest of the flex cables. Oh, and I spoke too soon. There is actually a screw here that I forgot to install before this. Well, a screw in a bracket or plate. Okay, now the only things left to install are the plate over this, the proximity sensor flex, and the plate that goes over that. However, before I install those plates, I am going to connect the proximity flex and just give it a quick test. <coughs> 